Just over a year ago, I uploaded a video showing you how to upgrade your cheap soldering iron. I think it's time to upgrade that upgrade. First thing though, solder, 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 we're all talking about the same thing. So it's uh, again, it's a potato, tomato. The whole idea behind the original video was that these fairly inexpensive soldering irons are hamstrung by really, really bad wiring. They're incapacitated straight out of the factory. Has this ever, ever happened, happened to you? To you? They bend and kink and wrap back upon themselves in the way that they get in your work and eventually get burned by the tip of the iron. Also, the plastic isn't resistant to this level of heat. So that video saw me taking apart a couple of soldering irons and switching over to another type of wire. I used something called cab wire. I mentioned in the original video that this type of rubber coated wire was named during London's reconstruction after World War II as they had to find readily available sources of a coating for all the electrical wiring which was needed. So the British used the rubber from taxi tires and I guess uh, some other vehicles too but mostly from taxi cabs and this became known as cab wire supposedly. I'm not sure, but I like that story, so I'm sticking to it. There were a couple of flaws in my original video which were pointed out by viewers. Additionally, I just discovered the Ken Burns zooming effect in my video editing app. Evidently, not how to use it effectively. Last year I upgraded these two, now it's time to upgrade the one I use the most, this one. I'm using a different type of wire, silicone jacketed. 18 gauge, two strand, completely impervious to heat. Let's move on over here. This is last year's upgrade with about four feet of cab wire. If you're doing this yourself and it's this type of model, you'll need two Phillips screwdrivers, one being fairly small and pointy, wire cutters, a wire stripping tool and a medium sized zip tie. If you don't have any of these, a butter knife can replace any and all of these tools. The butter, butter knife, truly an astounding tool. Le couteau à beurre. Le couteau à beurre. I dismantled this PVC three wire plug. These two screws make the strain relief clamp tightly around the power cable. Sometimes you need to give at least one of the screws a few extra turns. Once the plug is dismantled, releasing the wire is fairly straightforward. This Weller model has three small Phillips screws holding the handle and heating element together. and two more longer Phillips just inside the handle. A viewer suggested I use a magnet to keep my screws and other small metal parts all in one place as I dismantle something on my workbench. I remembered I had this and it's perfect. Unscrew the two wire nuts, also called connectors or marettes where I'm from. 
and then untwist the wires. This is exactly how the wires were connected when I bought the iron, and those are the very same wire nuts. This wire is thinner, but it's mostly due to a thinner outer shell. It seems it's rated for 300 volts. The silicone sleeve is fairly supple and cuts easily, so choose your tools and methods wisely. I'm stripping about 4 centimeters, an inch and a half, off the silicone shell and then just enough inner wire to connect safely with those small wire nuts. I'm cutting the wire long enough to go from the iron's base, looped over some accessory bars overhead and then back down to my workbench and the station's holster. The wire coming from the top is yet another viewer suggestion.
Originally, I wrapped some mechanics wire around the cable as a strain relief. Again, a viewer suggested I should use a zip tie, and it suddenly seemed so obvious that I immediately replaced that whole mess. That's it, it works wonderfully. I'm happy, so thanks for watching. Uh, this is me from last year. Oh, photo